I would love to hear further reflection on the age old sex question of the guy needing sex to validate the connection and the woman wanting connection first, which then leads to intimacy. We make time and space to unpack it. And in my office, it's always a both and. It's emotional connection leads to better sexual connection. Better sexual connection leads to better emotional connection. Without some emotional connection, sex is going to feel empty. It won't feel good and it won't lead to more. And so we prioritize building emotional connection because without it, it's such a limiter and with it, so much more is possible. Humans just won't let themselves be vulnerable if they don't feel safe doing it. That goes counter to every survival imperative our cells hold. Whether it's emotionally connected sex or not, there's a level of vulnerability for both partners. The age old stereotype that the guy wants sex to feel emotionally connected and the female wants emotional connection in order to feel sexual. That's what's both and. Both are right. Both are valid. And we don't try to talk one out of their longings and what they know helps them. Just, you know, reminders of the both and phenomenon, reminders that they're two sides of the same coin in terms of attachment and connection, and that people get their intimacy needs met in different ways. But of course, in EFT, We are in the business of building an emotional bond. And I would say that we need a minimum of that in order to feel safe enough to be vulnerable in an intimate way. So Catherine, I guess I'm hearing a couple different things. Number one, both and and. Sometimes like a man will say, look, I need to have sex in order to feel that connection. And we don't pathologize that. We recognize that that can and is true for him and that maybe it's not true for his partner. It's the opposite. Right. You make space for that. Okay, that's, that's true. We're in the business of building an emotional bond. That's where we're really going to do our work. And I think if I could extend our conversation to include same-sex couples, the question was asked about a hetero couple. Fair enough. But if we extend it to same-sex couples, maybe the conversation goes to, and this is a maybe, this is not in the science at all. This is just one little opinion right now from me. Maybe it's a safe working hypothesis to say withdrawers will feel more keen to get their connection through sex and pursuers will want emotional connection as a precursor to sex. I don't know if that's true. I don't know what others think about that, but if we take it out of a male, female, or heteronormative sexual lens, what is the safest way for these two people to get their attachment needs met? And if I'm a withdrawer and I'm avoidant emotionally which I'm entitled to be. Life taught me. I earned it like we talked about last month. And this is how life works better for me. Right. Then it makes perfect sense that I could use sex in order to feel emotionally connected. I I could benefit from that. I don't mean to say use as in manipulate, but sex would serve a different function for me. It would help me open up. It would help me feel connected. It would reassure me. It would restore my sense that my relationship with my partner is okay after all. It, It does all kinds of positive functions. Maybe a pursuer gets those needs and longings met through emotional connection. Possibly more about attachment styles than male, female. Maybe. These are the things that help me stay curious. I like not knowing. The couple gets to teach me about what comes first for them, the longing for sex or the emotional connection. You know, I'm not a sex therapist. I'm an EFT therapist. And there are some in our community who are both, which is lovely. And I guess I also hear you saying this, that you lean into the fact that both people need, want emotional connection. You know, the doorway is different. Yeah, the portal is different, but we make space for both. We normalize both. We validate each and help them find ways to work together. It's scary to have differences, especially as something as fundamental as sex. Right. But whether we're talking about sex or parenting styles or financial styles or whatever people say, the differences are threatening when we're disconnected and they become emotionally loaded. But in de-escalating and then heading into stage two, when we're processing the pain of that fear and we're processing the fears itself, the differences become much less big and much less threatening and much less overwhelming. And they just become differences. And then when they're more emotionally connected, the partners, they'll work together on how to problem solve their differences. Mm-hmm. For more hot tips on emotionally focused therapy, go to theeftcafe.com and sign up for our newsletter where you will receive short little clips like the one you just watched. Mm-hmm.